Hey, Lisa, Dennis Feidner, CFO on a go. Hey, so uh, let's do a little quick tour of accounting, and then I'm going to get into some screenshot, uh, some screens for you as well. But uh, if you look at the left-hand menu over here, so full general ledger, bank deposits, bank reconciliations, journal transactions. Uh, you can set up your own GL accounts. You can have multiple companies. So if you had uh, separate locations like location A, location B, you could get financial uh, income statements for both of those or to combine, or you can get them individually for each department. So that's a nice thing. I'll close these up as I go. Uh, trial balance, balance sheet, income statement, and I'm not going to look at all these. Uh, uh, I'm just going to give you kind of a little thing here. So on the income statement, um, as an example, balance sheet, same way. Income statement, then income statement, if that's this month and the year to date. I have another income statement that shows this year versus the previous year, and another one that shows uh, the actual versus the budget. And then another one, and uh, actually one of my favorites is this one. Give me a second. It's uh, actually, this one is the, the previous 12 months. Uh, and so I can look at trends, you know, side by side. I can look at all these months. And I'm just going to go down one page or so here. And if I want to look at some detail, like how did I spend $2,100 on office supplies? Uh, that was a laptop that I bought for Lee Singh. So, um, I always can drill down to the detail in here to get back. So if I'm looking at something where, and I'm, a, I'm my background uh, controller uh, for many, many years. You know, let's take these backwards. Let's say it was 200 and 275, and then the third month actually was 631. I go, well, how can this be two or three times what I'm normally spending? I just double click that, and I have two purchase orders. And if I want, I roll back to the actual invoice. So uh, it's nice for reviewing financials with the drill down feature. I'll get out of here. So, uh, you know, Finance reports, statement cash flow, what have you, uh, typical stuff. Accounts receivable. Uh, nice part is I have what we call, or what I call uh, just simple invoices where it's just one line item uh, and you're billing it and you're done. The next thing is uh, I have progress billing. So if you're doing percentage of completion billings, we have a progress billing. Uh, if you bill by the unit price, so you're doing 100 windows at $2 each, then you can do it that way. And then a full blown time and materials billings with multiple levels of markup. Uh, per project and both on labor and on equipment full accounts payable uh, lien releases um, tracking if uh, I'm not sure how, how many subcontractors you have that work for you but tracking subcontractors insurance and not allowing payment if their insurance has expired payroll we're gonna get into but full payroll uh, electronic reporting all of the certified payrolls uh, that you need all of the state forms for California are included uh, we have ability to do direct deposit as well, but I'm going to come back to payroll in a few minutes. Uh, so, and project management, which is this screen that I'm on now, <clears throat> excuse me, which includes, you know, it's jobs, subcontracts, uh, purchase orders, change orders, and then all of our cost reports. There's 139 cost reports in the system. So, uh, I'm not going to go over the rest of these things. They're pretty basic. Uh, so, let's just go into accounts payable. Uh, very simply, if I was going to enter in an invoice that I just got it in the mail, I'm going to open up payables. I'm going to put in the vendor's invoice number. So it's W234. Uh, I did not have a purchase order, <coughs> excuse me, or subcontract. I only knew one vendor number. Uh, <coughs> it's Home Depot. But you can actually type in some of the letters and hit F4 to pull up a list. Uh, you can pull up a, a list and pull the pull down list and look for them. A couple of different ways to do that. Uh, and then we're just going to charge this to job number 27. Uh, again, uh, I can look those up here, but typically you'll know the job numbers pretty well. Um, description is uh, lumber. I'm just pulling this in. It's pulling the invoice date in because it's today's date. <clears throat> if I want, I hit my minus sign and back that back to the actual invoice date. That's the due date. That's the discount date, which this vendor set up. <clears throat> Excuse me. A little froggy this morning. Uh, that's our discount. It's 10 days after invoice date if we want to get the discount. I can stick this in review status if it's pending somebody else's approval. Typically, we just put those to open. Down here come lumber. Um, I got one, and it was $2,589. Make it simple. It's going to get coded to my uh, cost of goods for my jobs for to $5,001. Uh, location, no, we don't have. We don't have to worry about that. It's not an inventory item. So now I'm going to save this real quick. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to expense those because I may want to expense those uh, to different Costco's. You'll notice that when I set up my 
um, vendor for Home Depot, I it always figured that it went to rough hardware, but <clears throat> excuse me, in this case, it was actually lumber, so I'm going to go find... Uh, here it is, oh, sorry, lumber. Uh, we'll just put in some carpentry. Actually... We'll put in some framing labor, something like that. So now this kind of, that's the Costco that it's going to go to, 6,010. Uh, if you override it, I can actually split this. If I want to put this to three different, four different items, I can do that. I can do it as an allocation and have it do the math for me, or I can enter the amounts in. So I just want to finish this out here so I can get rid of it. Uh, that is now done, and that invoice is done. The easiest way to enter invoice is this way. Enter the invoice number. Uh, I come in here and <laughs> see how good my memory is. Um, I think that's it. Oh, hang on. Oh, well, hang on. I'll go look one up. I thought I remember the purchase number, order number I did the other day. Um, oh, I missed one six. So, so there's where I had an invoice for my vendor had a purchase order so I entered the purchase order number in it knew who the vendor was it knew what job to charge it to it knew what item I ordered or items it depends on what the PO looks like uh, put in today's date back a couple days off for the invoice date did a couple times enter uh, this thing is ready to go it's now entered and it's already job costed and so but I, all I had to do is key in that and that and it filled all the rest of this in so it makes it a lot easier if you use the purchase order system which is part of our system so Full accounts payable. Payroll. Now I'm going to show you three ways to put payroll in. Uh, one's going to be better for you uh, than the other. I'm not sure because uh, I really haven't talked that much. But uh, one way that a lot of our clients do it is they use the daily field reports. And so they have the guys in the field to fill these out. Uh, or you can fill them out for them. But this is basically their daily diary, their log, whatever you want to call it. But as they enter these employees and those are the employees that work today. The cost code they worked on uh, is a regular pay, overtime pay. If you're doing a cer uh, certified project, what pay group they worked as today. And they can work in five different pay groups or 100 different pay groups. One day, we don't care. There's no limit on the number of line items you can have. And then these are the hours that they worked. Before I leave here, we also track subcontractors, uh, your equipment, if you want to manage your equipment. And then we also track all their meetings uh, that they had that day. And if there were any incidents, they track that as well. So a lot of information to go through. The point is, if I enter the payroll here, which you can see, that, that's the information that would be on their time card. I'm going to close this real quick. And I go to payroll, and I'm going to go into payroll processing real quick. One of my opportunities here is options, import data from my daily field report. So I can actually create the time card that you're probably keying today directly from that daily field report. Not everybody does that. Uh, quite a few of our clients do because it, it get, makes the guys enter their time every day so it's more accurate and then it's just a matter of importing those in at the end of the week. This would be the second way to enter time cards. So this would assume that you're getting your time cards on a weekly basis like on a Monday morning. Uh, employee number, the period start date, period end date, the date I'm going to put on the check. Um, yes, I know that's okay. I don't put a check number in because the system's going to sign that. Happens to be the third quarter. We're in California. And we go on and, whoops, and we go down here, um, put that in, the job number, I'm going to use 27 again. He worked on Costco, oh, let's do something different, he worked on concrete today. Uh, it was regular pay, he's 70% apprentice, that's his default, which that means that's his rate of pay. He worked seven hours. Uh, that's the worker's comp code that's associated to our concrete work. It came in directly from the system, I did not have to enter it, so now... My worker comp reports should be pretty accurate. I come down, I enter, the, so I, since you notice I only entered seven hours, <clears throat> it assumes that he, everybody works eight hour day or more, so I put the same date in there. Uh, and now he's working on a Costco 1540 for an hour. Um, got one hour there, etc. You get the idea. So this is just entering the time card like you were just entering the employee, the jobs they worked on, the Costco's they worked on, their hours. Uh, and if they were working on prevailing wage projects, what pay group they should be uh, worked as. So I just go through that. I enter all my employees. I run my edits. I check them out. I run my payroll. I print the checks or direct deposit. Make my do all my um, 
tax returns, and I'm done and I'm ready for the next week. But the good part is, in the job cost, I'm putting in the 1750 along with the workers' comp and all of the associated burden, FICA, FUTA, SUDA, SUI, and God knows what else we have nowadays uh, that goes along with that, but all the, the taxes and fringes. So two, the second way to enter it. The third way, and not many people do this, but a lot of our larger companies do, uh, we have daily payroll. And so uh, I am now, I'm going to go back one day, so hang on. So I'm entering the payroll for yesterday, August 18th. My friend Carlos, job 27. Um, I can hide a lot of these columns. Um, Costco 3000. It's regular pay. There's his pay group again, and he worked eight hours. Um, if you want to track your equipment, we can actually um, enter equipment here. Uh, if you want to charge something to the job and just put in the hours the equipment operated in. If that's not something you're going to do, uh, actually, I'm going to do it this way. Um, I can come in here and hide columns or, you know, all the equipment columns I can hide. Um, if you want to put the description in there, I can add that column back. So all these columns can be hidden or shown. It's up to you on how you have those columns. But you want to set them up so that the data entry is really smooth for you, uh, whatever. But So now it's daily. And then the daily, once I'm done with Friday's time card, uh, which now if you think about it on Monday morning, I'm only really entering one day at a time, one day at a time. So it's pretty, pretty fat, fast on Monday. Uh, I create the time cards. It takes all of those dailies for the week and rolls them into a time card for that employee. But uh, a lot of our employees, uh, I'm sorry, companies that have, you know, 50 to 100 to 200 employees, they found that the daily payroll is an easier way to enter it because then the Monday morning is not a nightmare with all of those time cards coming in with the, all those line items. So that's uh, payroll. The one thing, uh, obviously you're on the accounting side, the one thing that our CFOs and controllers absolutely fell in love with was this feature that we added uh, two releases ago, maybe three, I can't remember now, uh, is our alerting system. So you can see that this box is checked. Uh, and so what it's telling the system is that anytime a job cost exceeds a budget for any specific cost code, send me an email. So if you had $10,000 to do something and now with payroll, once payroll's processed and some AP invoices are in or equipment charges or inventory transfers, and that budget has now exceeded by more, at least a dollar, uh, it's going to send you an email telling you that you're over budget or the project manager, you're over budget. In addition, uh, I like to know when my checking account goes below a certain balance. I may want to know what, when change orders are more than 30 days old. I may want to get a, <coughs> excuse me, uh, some of our owners like to get emails every time a new vendor is set up. Uh, this may be uh, a vendor that you haven't you set up real quick, right? So you can write them a check, but you haven't got the 1099 yet. So you're gonna get an email uh, letting you know that you set up a vendor and you don't have a, the box check that he requires a 1099 or it doesn't require a 1099. Uh, it's gonna let you know that. Um, a PO, excuse <coughs> me. If a PO is over a certain limit, let's say the owner only allows people to write POs for 10,000. But he wants to get a list of every PO that was written over 10,000. He can get that. And these can be set up to be daily or weekly. Uh, these are having to be set up all for daily just because it's the demo data. Uh, and then I also have another one that gives me an alert for any uh, insurance certificates that are expiring within the next 30 days. And, and, and you can write your own. These are just ones that I wrote or our consultants actually wrote for people. So uh, anyway, hopefully that helps. If you need anything else, please give me a call. Uh, you have my phone number. It's 800 six five nine five eight five one but full full accounting um fi financials gl's customizable full ap um actually on ap now uh you can actually uh pay your vendors direct deposit so if you have vendors that want to have uh, a direct deposit rather than receiving a check uh, we have the ability to do that as well so anyway and full inventory management not sure that's important to you but full inventory and then uh just really quickly uh if i'm looking at financial review um, down here, you know, here's my quick ratio, you know, here's my, and these are like, this is demo data, so these numbers look kind of squirrely. Uh, here's my cash balances, uh, here's my AP balances, you know, so um, all that's possible. These are all just built in, and so once you get using the system, you'll be able to run those reports as well. The last thing I want to show you, which is really pretty cool thing, is if I go into... Let's go into accounts payable, actually. So we go to accounts payable. Uh, we'll just go to vendors, just for the heck of it. 
up here there's a set of binoculars and they're on every screen so if i want to see uh, vendors that have invoice and their invoice defaults or i want to see vendors and their invoice activity if i want to see vendors by a certain tax district uh, i can do all that and i can just write these queries that, to run that uh, over here on the job side and again i don't know how many projects you you would do but let me uh, just get into jobs real quick um, so one of the couple of queries we wrote here is, I want a list of all my jobs by client. And, you know, I may just be one, I want to know what Jessica's doing, you know, but I'm just going to run them all here because I don't have that many. Oops. So here's all the jobs I have with Jessica and the, and the, con the contract, what they owe me. Here's all of the contracts I have with Bill. Here's all the contracts I have with Raphael Enterprises, et cetera. So I can do that. So these are all custom. You can write these yourselves. Uh, you know, here's all the jobs by, by supervisor, so I can get a list and say, okay, here's everything that uh, Lorena is project manager on. Here's who estimated the job. Here's the architect on the job. And this is what type of job it is. So, again, anything in the database can be added to these queries. So, really simple to write. So, you're not doing things in Excel. You're not having to go ferret information out. You basically create the query, and it's there for to use forever or by anybody else that wants to run it, like an owner or something like that. Anyway. Hopefully that helps on the data entry screens. Uh, obviously, you probably, now that I say this at the end of the video, <laughs> you can always pause it and look at the actual fields that are on there. I forgot to say that at the beginning. I apologize. Uh, but you can pause it uh, if you want to see all the fields, because if I didn't cover them all, you can actually uh, do a screenshot and take a look at it. So anyway, let me know if you need anything else, uh, and then uh, we'll take care of that for you. Thanks a lot.